Praise God and welcome. My name is Pastor Jim, and the ministry that God has allowed me to step into is called Fresh Oil Ministries International. And today, what I'm going to do, one person at a time, I'm going to reach the world for Christ. And that means you. Amen? You know, and today what I want to do is I just want to go up to my Native American brothers and I want to tell them something in Dene. Boholne neche neta nashbatu nishe et tu hasenorte. What I just did is I told my Native American brothers about this verse and the scripture that God had cut my eye teeth on. It was June 3rd, 7.57 p.m., and the year was 1980. I was in an ambulance dying from an overdose. And God told me, or he gave me, Exodus 14.14. 14. I will fight your battle while you hold your peace. And see, today, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what the enemy or who the enemy used to say something. Because I want to share this with you. See, it's not what people say to you, about you, that hurts. It's how you respond to what they say that hurts. And right now, I just want you to have peace that surpasses your understanding. I want you to have peace in the middle of that storm. And as you have the peace of God, you tell the storm, peace, be still. You know, today... I want to show you why you can do that to a storm. See, because in Genesis 126, God did not just say he made you and I in his image and his likeness. He said, and I give him dominion. You know what dominion is? It's authority. And you know, when a police cadet finishes his training, he has a badge and a uniform and a gun because he completed his training. And he knows the law. You know, when a martial artist completes their training, they're elevated to teach others because they completed their training. And see, when you and I, as children of the Most High, complete our training, we can do all things. There's no limit. We can do all things. But see, you have to be in that right not frame of mind, but in that right frame of spirit. I want to share this with you. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, and listen to this, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And see, there's no other name like Jesus. Because every name that has a name, it doesn't matter if you don't even know what it is and you call it that whatchamacallit, you just gave it a name and it has to bow to the name of Jesus. And in verse 18 it says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He has no authority. He has no power. And listen to this in verse 19. It's something that's 
I hope you get excited in the Spirit as much as God has excited me to tell you about it. Behold, I give unto you. Put your name there. I give. God saying, listen, I give you, Jim. I give you, I give you power to tread on the serpents and scorpions. And over all, he didn't say all except, he says, and the power of the enemy, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, let me break that word nothing down, no thing, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. My, my, my. See, Jesus didn't say, if you work out like those and them and really get buffed, then you will be able to. No, he says, you know what? I want you just the way you are. A sinner saved by grace. I want you just the way you are. Because you lifted not only your hands, but you lifted your heart and you said, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. Wash me with the blood. You know, so like I said, Jesus didn't say if you're this, if you're that, then you could do that or that. No, Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on anything that is not of me and tries to come against you. You know, it could be your bills. It could be the state of mind that other people say, well, you used to do it like that, and I guess you'll always do it like that. Or you used to be, so I guess you'll know. What God has said, he says, he didn't say that he's going to restore you. Because see, when you're restored and you have a piece of something on your desk and it falls, to restore, to restore is to pick that paper up and put it in the same place it was. But God says he's not going to restore you, he's going to renew you. In other words, he's going to wipe that table off and says, come here, new person. I'm going to not only, you might think it's a tablecloth, but I'm going to put that mantle upon you. And see, he said, and no thing, not will, but shall not. In other words, it couldn't try. All the demons of hell and the imps of the kingdom of darkness can come at you. But God says, no thing shall ever hurt you. But see, it's up to you. <coughs> How do you perceive that word, and nothing shall hurt me? How are you looking at it today? He says, wait a minute. God didn't restore me. He renewed me. I'm a new creature in Christ. I can do all things because God's word said I could. See, and what does the word all mean to you? See, when you go through what you go through to get where God wants you to be, all things are going to come against you. But in the end, you can finally raise your heart and say, I have a testimony. And see, I know what I'm talking about. In 2006, I went through three major brain surgeries because I had five aneurysms in my brain. But God used that doctor to heal me. And I want to share this with you. You see, I looked at the doctor and I said, Doctor, you can perform your duty, but first, 
we're going to pray. And he goes, okay. So that doctor grabbed my hand. And this is what the doctor said. Kasha, Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, and direct me. My God. My God. But see, God used that. He used that and God healed me through that man of God that was a doctor. And see, I say that because I say, you're going to go through a lot of things. But you know what? God is telling you, start with the end in mind. And be determined to succeed. Hey, I want to succeed in being who I am. I want you to succeed in what God has already put in your heart to do. But see, you could do it. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm telling you, you could do it. If I could, you could. My God. See, and, and, and let me share this in Isaiah chapter 61. Verse 3. It's awesome because God says, Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. Give unto them beauty for ashes. It doesn't matter what burned up in your life. You look at it and say, Father, Lead me, guide me, and direct me. Because in your word you said, and nothing by any means shall hurt me. Nothing. You know, so are you ready? Are you ready to have the oil of joy? Are you ready to put on that praise, that garment of praise, when that spirit of heaviness comes upon you? Are you ready to say, oh Lord, <clears throat> Be it on to me according to your word. I want to share this with you. You know, I've had this silly little cough for quite a few years. <laughs> Excuse me. And, you know, one time I went to the doctor because it was irritating. And the doctor and his staff tried to tell me that I had... COPD. Well, you know what? I got up and in their office I started giving God the praise. And I started giving God the worship. And I said, You call it COPD, but I call it HOPD. God has given me hope. You know, that all things are under His feet. Just like for you today, all things are under your feet. God has given you dominion. I want to share this with you in Genesis 126. You know, and it's good to hear. I love to hear that. The, the pages of the, of the Bible turning. See, in Genesis 126, I said, all things are under your feet. And after he said... I let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Now listen to this. And over every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth. Under your feet. Hold on to that. Grab it. Get excited. Wait a minute. You know what? <laughs> Poverty. You're under my feet. Uh, you know what sickness uh, you're under my feet uh, you know what uh, I don't care because I don't know what you came to do but I came uh, to worship glorify and magnify the Lord my God so are you ready for that are you ready to give to have that beauty for the ashes are you ready to give Praise as garment put as God puts that garment and mantle. Amen. 
as he puts that garment and mantle of praise for that spirit that tries to keep you down. See, when you stand in the authority of someone else, I shared this with you. Police have a badge because they completed their training. When you go to school, you have the diploma because you completed your training. When you're in the military, you're there to serve and protect because you finished your training. But I want to share this with you. It's in the book of John. And I want you to turn to it because it's awesome. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. Because listen to this. I have finished the work which thou giveth me to do. Have you finished that work? Have you said, Lord, <laughs> thank you for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lord, thank you because I'm walking in what you call me to walk in. Lord, because I finished the work that you gave me. My God, my God. In other words, now that you have completed the training, you can say, I am. Woo! I am. Woo! I am more than a conqueror. Why? Because I finished the training and I finished the course that you gave me to complete. And after you say that I am more than a conqueror, you can step into what God has you to do because you can say, I can do all things. My God, my God. I can do it. So many people ask me, Pastor Jim, can you do it? I said, I don't know. I haven't tried yet. But I'm not going to do it with my ability. I'm saying, Lord, lead me, guide me, and direct me. And I want you to note this. At this point, it doesn't matter what you went through to complete the training. It doesn't matter. Because God says, count it all joy. Are you going through that? When you go through, you think it's hell's half acre. And you're saying, oh God, get me out of this mess that I got myself into. But God says, son, <laughs> It's not the fire of the enemy. It's my refining fire. I want you to be who I see you to be, not who you appear to be. Some of you out there are saying, wait a minute. He's talking to me. No, I'm not. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. And it's telling you, get up. Get up from that bed of sickness. Get up uh, from that bed uh, of poverty. Get up from where you are to where God has already told you you're going to be. So it doesn't matter. And see, I want to share this with you. Not in closing, but in opening or starting at a new beginning. See, because every time you stop, not quit, stop the event that God has given you to complete, a new one opens. Oh, this time, I think. No, this time I know that God's leading me this way. Everybody else tells me, aren't you going? I say, I'm going oh, after the Word of God because it healed me. It raised me up. Uh, and it made me new. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? And see, I want to share this with you in Ephesians chapter 11, uh, chapter 7. I mean, excuse me, chapter 6. I was testing you. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able 
to stand against the wiles of the enemy, of the devil. So when you finally put on the Word of God in your heart, and everything that can come against you does come against you, God says, stand, therefore stand. You know, I want to share this with you. I want you to, I don't want you to close your eyes and lift up your hands. I want you to open your eyes and open your heart. And if there's, I'm going to talk to the ministers first. You know, if there's any sin that you're hiding, God saw it already. You know, that little, well, I, I won't, that's what the Word says. I mean, you know, and you take the Word out of contents. You know, if you're doing something that someone else doesn't agree with, well, put it away until they come back. No, if it's a sin, it's a sin. doesn't matter how you try to just, just lift up your heart right now. And says, Father, I thank you for the office that you have called me to lead, guide, and direct the people from their sin. But Lord, forgive me for mine. Lord, use me. Because I can promise you something, he'll never abuse you. It's done. It's completed. You know the word. It's done. Old things have passed away. And I can't welcome you to the family because you're already in it. But I can say I love you and you can't do nothing about it. I want to talk to those people right now that have never experienced the mighty power of God in their life. You know, and if you're sick and tired is sick and tired of being sick and tired, I'm talking to you. It's your time. You know? And if you don't mind, repeat after me. Father, in the name of your matchless son, Jesus, I ask you, Father, wash me. Wash my sins away. Forgive me. And it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. God's there with his open arms and says, come. He's ready for you and you're ready for him. Just say, forgive me, Lord. And it's done. Welcome to the family. And I want to share this also. If any of you have a prayer request, there's the phone number or P.O. box. Right. You know, the name of this program is Reaching the World for Christ. And I'm on this program every first and third Monday of every month. I was going to say first and third Sunday, but no. <laughs> you know, so write. And if you want me to pray for you, send the complete prayer request. Oh, my son is this, my daughter, my... No, or I am. No. Right. Prayer works. I'm a living testimony of that. Because remember as I was telling you, June 3rd, 1980, at 7.57 in the morning when God finally touched me, well, I didn't know, but my mother, she was interceding for me. You know, she'd get just all alone. And she'd start interceding. And it works. So like I said, mm, there's somebody right now. <laughs> and your name is Gertrude. You're being healed from cancer right now. I command cancer to die. It has no more dominion upon you. And I'm not just talking to the kids or the preteens. or I'm talking to everybody. Those of you that are suffering from autism, I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus. 
And see, and there's this couple, couples, probably a couple of million of you, that are going through marital problems right now. Ask God to heal you. Don't ask God, oh Lord, make him or make her. No, ask God, Lord, make me. Make me an instrument of worship. And you'll see, God will get that marriage and do what counselors, doctors, or whoever always tried but never did. Give it to God right now. In the name of Jesus. And right now, see, it's not just a problem in Africa, but the enemy wants it to cover the world. I curse Ebola right now. Ebola, you have no dominion over the people of this earth. And those that are infected right now, I command healing in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you the glory. We give you the praise and we give you the honor. So, my precious brothers and sisters, and Dene, Yata He Bashte, I thank God for you. And I give you the glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you.